Hey guys, my name is Megan. I'm a photographer based in Los Angeles. I shoot mostly swimwear and clothing and I wanna show you guys what's in my camera bag. So I've been shooting for about 10 years. I try to keep everything simple and functional and to the point. One of the number one questions that I get is what kind of camera do you use? I've just upgraded my camera from the 5D Mark IV to the R5. So I'm gonna go over the differences between the two, why I like each one. Um, and I'm gonna unpack my camera bag and show you guys everything that I use. Make sure to subscribe and hit the little bell button below so that you don't miss a video. I'm also gonna be linking all of the products that I have here down in the description below. So these are the two camera bags that I use. This is the Shimoda Action X50, and then right here we have the Peak Design Everyday Sling and the 10 liter. So the Shimoda Action X50 is the camera bag that I use most of the time. I love it because it has so many different compartments and just so much accessibility. It fits on me really nicely and it's very supportive. It's got like a waist strap that goes around my waist and take some of the weight off. So I use it a lot when I'm traveling. Um, I take it everywhere with me. I just wanna show you guys some of the compartments and how it works. This is where I keep my memory cards, screen cleaning wipes, basic things or extra things that I need to bring with me. This is the second compartment here. It's got two entryways. It's got a roll top, which helps seal the bag for weatherproofing. Um, and then it's also got this zipper entry. This compartment's super big. I'll put beach towels in it. Basically other swimsuits, whatever wardrobe I have, it really holds so much and it's also got zipper compartments on the inside. Um, I keep this Think Tank bag, which is a separate company. It does not come with the bag, but I keep it for my extra batteries, memory cards, whatever I need. I also keep my crystals that I shoot through in here, which I'll show you guys in a bit. Um, and my filters, ND filters, um, starburst filters, whatever I want to have is in this compartment. Also has this separate entryway on this side where you can open it up and actually access the inside of the camera bag, which is really cool. Um, so the inside unzips here and I keep my 70 to 200 lens here in case I'm on the go and wanna switch my lens up really quickly. Now I'll show you the back of the bag and the inside of it. So unzipping the back of the bag, this is where I keep my laptop. It's right in the back door of it. I put my 16 inch MacBook Pro in here. It fits great, no problem. It's not super tight. Um, and then this is the inside of the bag where I keep all my gear. So I keep my Canon R5 in here with the 24 to 70 millimeter lens. My 70 to 200 lens stays in the outside pocket so I can access it from the outside. I have a 100 millimeter prime lens and a 50 millimeter prime lens that I also keep inside of this bag. And then in the top part, I keep my Godox V1C flash. Now I'll show you guys my Peak Design Everyday Sling 10 liter. I love this bag because it's super small, easy to carry around, not super heavy unless you pack it with gear like I usually do. So opening it up, I'll show you guys how I pack it for a normal day. Um, this is if I'm doing like an e-com shoot or if I'm heading to a beach, I know exactly what I'm shooting. I know I'm not gonna need any prime lenses or just my basic two lenses, my camera, we're good to go. Um, love this because it fits everything really nicely. Um, I have my 70 to 200 lens here, my R5 with the 24 to 70 lens and my Godox V1C flash. It's got a compartment here that you can put a tablet in, which I don't really use for that, but I'll put, if I'm traveling, my passport. Um, on the inside, it's also got this compartment here. This is great for, I have a Tide pen right now in case I stain my clothes. <laughs> um, it's great for memory cards, batteries, whatever you might need. Um, and then you've also got a compartment here where you can put your keys, your wallet, your phone, whatever else you might need while you're shooting. So the Samoda Action X50 goes for $329.95 and the Peak Design Everyday Sling in the 10 liter goes for $149.95. Spending a little bit of extra money on how you carry and protect your gear to me is totally worth it. So my current camera body that I'm using now is the Canon R5. It's a mirrorless camera. Um, I just wanted to show you guys the difference because I just upgraded from the 5D Mark IV and this is what I was using for the last like three years. Love this camera, it's great, it's a workhorse. Um, I've shot thousands and thousands of images, probably hundreds of thousands of images on this camera. Still is great, um, but it is a little bit bigger. You can see the difference here This and it's a lot heavier. This feels like a dinosaur right now, um, but love this camera as well. Just wanted to show you guys the difference. This camera here is absolutely insane. It's 45 megapixels, 
These images are so crisp and clean. You can zoom way in. Um, everything's super, super crisp. It's the craziest files that I've seen from any camera that I've ever used. It's got this flippable screen, which is really cool because if you're trying to get a low angle, you could flip it up, completely put it on the ground and see exactly what you're getting or same thing with high angle shots, flip it down, um, see everything. I really love this feature. The viewfinder also has, it's digital, whereas my Mark IV was not digital, so I can actually see what the colors are gonna look like while I'm shooting. The touchscreen on the back is really nice as well because if the focus for some reason is not catching, you can always give it a tap, it'll catch on whatever you tap on. So this camera has a really cool feature. Um, it's built-in eye autofocus, so it catches the person's eye. I've shot models running full speed at me, directly at me, every single shot's in focus. It's incredible. Or on the Mark IV, I was using a back button focus, so every time the model moved, I'd have to press a button and refocus, whereas this one just follows the model, follows exactly what's happening, and stays in focus. The Mark IV goes for $2,500, and this one is $3,899. It is quite a bit more expensive, but I really, really do love my R5. I think it's such a big upgrade and totally worth it. But again, this camera, this Mark IV, I think that if you're already using it and you love it, great. If you're looking to upgrade anytime soon because it's getting old, it's getting a little beat up, this is a great option as well. So I just wanna show you guys before I get into my lenses. I purchased this control ring um, to go on my R5 because the R5 takes RF lenses. Because I came from a 5D Mark IV, I had a bunch of EF lenses which are not compatible with the new R series. So I purchased this control ring and I can now attach all of my EF lenses to my R5. The first lens I wanna show you guys is the 24 to 70 millimeter F2.8 version two. Uh, this is my go-to all-around best versatile lens. If you're starting out and you just want one lens that does everything, this is your go-to. This lens gets really wide shots and you can also zoom in for tighter portrait shots at a 70 millimeter. It's super, super versatile. I use it on e-com days. I don't even change my lens. This is all I'm using. This one is my number one. So this is my 70 to 200 2.8L version two. I absolutely love this lens. It, I think, is the most flattering lens when shooting things like swimwear. You can also use it for portraits, which is great for just the compression, um, the background, the buttery backgrounds, just really, really nice. It does go for $1,300, which I know is quite a bit for some people. I do think that it's worth it, but in time, if it's something that you wanna invest in, go for it. This is my 100 millimeter 2.8 macro lens. Um, it's a super simple lens. There is an L-series version of this. I'm fine with this one, I don't use it a whole lot. I use it for detail shots, close-up shots, beauty, um, portraits, anything like that. So I use it here and there, so I'm okay with the cheaper lens. I actually got this one on Craigslist for $150. So if you look, you can find deals. This one works for me. I've thought about upgrading, but there's so many other things that I wanna spend my money on. I stick with this one. So this is my 50 millimeter 1.4 lens. Um, again, there is an L-series version, a better one of this, but this one goes for $399, so it's super affordable. I don't honestly use this lens that much anymore, but when I first started, I had the 50 millimeter 1.8, and it goes right around $100, maybe a little bit more, and just to be able to see the bokeh and the blurry background is kind of what got me into photography. So now I'm gonna show you my holy grail of flashes that I finally found after years and years of trying and spending so much money on flashes. So this is my Godox V1C flash. This one has met all of my expectations and has no downfalls in my opinion. It goes for only $259. It's comparable to the Profoto A10, which goes for right around $1,000. So to only have to spend $259 and to get something comparable to something that cost over $1,000 is a winner in my book. This flash recharges super fast. I don't even really notice it or have to pause or hesitate when I'm shooting. I'm just continuously shooting, never have any issues with it recharging. It's got a lithium ion battery. It slides in right here. Super easy to keep track of. Charges super fast too, slides right in. I have one spare. I hardly ever have to change it, even on days where I'm doing a full day shooting flash. I also purchased this diffuser. It's magnetic, which is really cool. You just put it on, it stays on. I also have a wireless trigger for it, so I can put it up on a stand and trigger it wirelessly from my camera. Works really well, recharges quickly. This thing's great. These are the additional accessories I keep in my camera bag. I try to keep it pretty minimal by just having what I need, or my camera bag gets super cluttered, extra heavy, and it's just not fun to carry around. I keep two spare batteries for my R5. 
And I also keep a charger in case I'm on set and for some reason something dies. It's just nice to have that extra security and knowing that your batteries will always be charged. I keep one spare battery for my Godox V1C flash unit, as well as the charger just in case. Again, I don't really use this. I never really have to, but just in case it's nice to have for the extra security. I keep this microfiber cloth as well as this little alcohol wipe. I order this on a pack of Am on Amazon of like hundreds for like $10. Um, if there's a smudge or anything on your lens you need to get off, these come in handy and you can finish it off with the microfiber cloth to get all the extra residue off. Um, I keep spare memory cards. So with my R5, there are dual card slots. There's a slot for an SD card and a CF Express card. This is the SD card holder. Um, I have five spare SD cards just in case. I usually keep an SD card and a CF Express card in my camera at all times, just so that I've got them on two cards should one card go bad. Next up, I have my filters. Um, I keep them in this case that I got on Amazon. It's super easy to use. It's got different slots for different filters. I have one of the star filters. So it's got the little crosshairs and it makes a little starburst wherever the light catches, which is really fun to play with. And I've also got some ND filters in here as well. Onto the fun stuff. I also keep this oil. This is actually a hairspray. It's oil sheen and conditioning spray with shea butter, argan oil, and coconut oil. Um, it's by a company called Motions. I ordered this on Amazon for right around $10. What I like about this is it's not super sticky. Um, if you spray it onto a model's body and you rub it, it's, it's gonna just absorb into your hands. You're not gonna get your camera all greasy, um, but it still gives you that nice glow. Onto my absolute favorite thing are these crystals that I got. I got these on Autorama. They were right around $70, $80. Um, it comes in a set of three. You can hold these in front of the lens and they will show just different features. I'm gonna come over and show you. You can just kind of distort as you see here and add this to your photo however you want, depending on what aperture you're using. It will give you a different effect. But I absolutely love using these. I think it adds something totally different to the shot, what you can't get anywhere else. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you guys decide what gear you should purchase or what gear you should bring along on shoots. Just remember, if any of this gear is a little too expensive, there are other options. Um, you can always buy things used online. It's just about what finding what works for you. I'd love to know what's in your camera bag. Let me know down in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll be back soon with a new video.